Right, I think we're live, fashion relates as usual. So, um, yeah, hey guys, and welcome to another F FSX, another Train Small stream. So, today the DBBR155 came out, the new electric logo from Notel Games for the main spec art and Rurus Ignored lines. And, um, yeah, it should be a pretty good one. So, I'm quite excited about this train, known affectionately as the electric um, box, I believe it is, the electric container, even. But, uh, yeah. Should be a good stream today, and of course we do have the giveaway today, so we're giving away a copy of the DBBR182, the uh, recent train out by Dovetail Games. Uh, welcome to stream, Manuel, how are you doing today? And Niels, how are you doing? How are you doing? But uh, yeah, give it a few seconds for people to join the stream, and so uh, yeah, we'll go for the uh, super professional layout of the uh, trailer, because I've not done this at all well. Uh, how am I going to do this? I can easily do it like this. Uh, yeah, something a few people have pointed out. If you listen out, there we go, right there. They left the uh, the audio jungle watermark in the actual uh, video. So um, yeah, sorry, Doctor Games, you very likely licensed the song, but you used the uh, wrong MP3 file for that one. Anyways, um, back into the game. Let's do this one seriously. So the DBBR one five five. Comes out on two lines, the main spec art and the Rurus Ignored lines. I presume the tutorial of it will be on this one, because it's always been the first time running this train. We will need to go through the uh, tutorial and how it works. Uh, okay, maybe not this one then. Um, lines compatible with, uh, not rapid transit, no, it's just the uh, two mainline ones. Mainly this one, I presume. Uh, tutorials. There we go, 1 for 5 introduction. 10 minutes long, let's give it a go, shall we? Uh, trains like it's from Minecraft. It's a very rectangular train, so the backstory of it goes is the trains running in the East Germany side were running from like the 1940s, soon after the Second World War ended, and so uh, they needed new locos to take over, and therefore in the 70s and 80s they built these new trains, then class 250 I believe it was, for the um, East Germany side of things. And then when they got, uh, when the, um, what's it called, unification came together and Germany became one, the uh, train then got reclassed, the uh, DBBL 155. So it's an electric locomotive, and like I say, it's uh, commonly known as the uh, electric container, or at least that's the uh, German nickname for it. Uh, how's my day today? Not bad, not bad. It's been a good day at work, and getting ready tomorrow to go to Biarritz in France, so, uh, that I'm excited for, that's for sure. Anyways, let's go through the uh, instruction Welcome for to this, this one. DB BR155 electric locomotive in DB traffic red livery. During this brief introduction, we will go through the startup and stopping procedures. That sounds like the voice Climb of Martin. To get started. I'm fairly sure that is. It's kind of bored, so it's all ready to go. So back at the train, and let's start it all up. To get the locomotive started, set the battery isolation. Battery on. The auxiliary compressor will be used to raise the pantograph later. Auxiliary on. Okay, what's well, mask even? This locomotive draws power from the overhead electrical supply via a pantograph mounted on the roof. For this to work, we'll need to set up and then raise the pantograph. That goes. You want two? Okay, you want two. Anyways, let's turn up. Your time will be spent in the driver's seat. So obviously in this loco, you do control the uh, electrics managed from the uh, battery compartments in the centre. And then we come to the uh, very Soviet-style wooden panelling here in the main cab. 
Should be a fun train in this. We've got a steering wheel and everything. Who knew? Set the reverser. Right, reverse the forwards. Wait a moment and let the auxiliary compressor charge. Uh, auxiliary compressor. That would be I'm now, not too short. Activate the pantograph so that it raises up and makes contact with the overhead catenary. Pantograph up. The locomotive is now ready circuit to be energized. Breaker. This is controlled by the main circuit. Close. Yeah, it's either Steve or um, Martin. I'm fairly sure it's Martin, because Martin usually does the uh, German routes. Okay, transformer on. The compressor fills the air brake system with air, so that the brakes can be released when you're ready. Compressor automatic. The brake key confirms the train is in control from this cab. Brake key on. The driver's brake valve is used to manage the brakes across the entire train. Release the brakes. Headlights are important in letting others around know that a train is operational. Headlights on, along with the uh, left and white, left and right, left and white, and then headlight be rightless to dim. To get moving, only a small amount. Oh of gosh! Is needed. Once up to speed. Hang on, so how does this work? What did he say? <laughs> um, brakes are released. I'm missing. Hang on, let me go back on the live stream a bit so I can see what you're saying. Right, uh, get moving, any small amount of tractive force is needed. Once speed is up, you can just apply more traction to the rails. Okay, so it all sets to 70. Uh, press escape, you can reduce instructions. Cheers. Uh, set traction force selected 75%. Okay. Ah, and then release the, the handbrake. Procedure complete. Release the remaining brakes. There we go. To apply power, rotate the tap chamber to the desired tap index, and then you will see the locomotive gradually move up to that tap index as more power gets applied. That is crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh That is crazy. I love that. Now we're rolling. We can apply more power. The focus can be diverted towards achieving the desired speed. Now that the desired speed has been met, traction no longer needs to be applied and we can coast. The tap index will need to be at zero. Tap it to zero. There's a short distance between here and the next stop, so be sure to manage the train and prevent overspeeding. Right, so you are carrying any uh, freight compartments today. But I will say, the actual control. I was not expecting this for sure. Imagine driving your car after this yanking the steering to accelerate. Yeah, so uh, bring the car up to speed. Ugh. Man, that is. Certainly different to uh, most trains, I can tell you that for a fact. I mean, I mean, I've, let's say I'm not exactly the uh, most up to speed of trains and all that, but uh, a separate trap, separate tap and traction thing. There's a lot to learn on this train, that's for sure. Um, wait for the bot to recognize that you're streaming. Uh, oh yes, try and get the um, Nightbot to work, because Nightbot's been a bit... Sorry, not Nightbot, sorry. Um, now live. Now live's been a bit funny. I'm saying that as well. There you go, stop at location. Four hundred meters. Let's see uh, how effective are the brakes on this train. Probably not quite as effective, say the uh, one eight, one three five, one eight three. Sorry, I'm not sure what I'm talking about right now. Which uh, definitely goes for one brakes, one acceleration. In your case, the uh, should be 
your rights. Nope, we need a bit more power in. Man, this is very different. Again, normally you'd have to look straight to control your train. In this case, I'll be driving mostly from this angle, just so I can actually see the, uh, the tap and the train. Very strange. Whoops. That needs to be at zero. I don't know, I think I actually made an uh nor a bit of break in that. Not complaining. Good work. That concludes all the basics of this locomotive. Sounds good. There you go, got our first achievements. Uh is it four sorry, yeah, powerful on the BR one five five. Wow, that really is a whole different train's drive, and my camera coloration really is being weird today. I'm not this, uh. Nope, that's chroma key. Color correction, no. Right, my camera's being very weird. I'm not this, uh. Orange. Hmm, I'll work on my lighting at some point. Anyways, uh, right, well, that was a interesting first bit of stream. My chat a little bit so I can see you guys what you're saying. Um, the fill acceleration and braking on the 182 is actually ridiculous. It will pass as a tube liner. Yeah, the 182, the uh, Euro Sprinter, usually is a very great train to uh, ride along in. Anyways, this is all about the 155. Let's talk about the 155 and its ancient Soviet style control systems. Alright, so the scenarios it comes with in this ser service is Let Marth Light, Steel Cycle, and Fossil Fuels. I'll go through those at some points in the near future during a normal series. They'll be every Thursday. But for now, let's give the uh, 155 away, not the 143, sorry. There it is. Yeah. You think this is Sultan Soviet? Give the uh, electric box a go. Right, so. So let's try and spring clear will do. Let's find a service to run it on. Yeah, most likely be the one for the map. We'll go. We'll go Finn and drop to Hagen. Let's go through the uh, ball map heading eastward. So, if you guys are interested in winning the uh, DBBR one eight two, then um, just say, pardon me. Just say uh, your sprint in the chat for a chance to win the giveaway today. Dovetail Games have been nice to give me a couple of extra keys. And just said to uh, throw them at you guys during the um, stream today. So, uh, yeah, we'll be doing that. Uh, can't wait to make the full edits talk. We'll make your own rail line. We all do, man. We all do. I know for... Hmm. Use the tail. Uh, I know for a fact that uh, I'll definitely be doing a couple of lines that I can think of. Mainly one in Poland and one out in the... Uh, one out in Finland. Anyways, uh, let's ask... So it's all ready to go. So, key on... Brakes release, uh, lights as required, so headlights on, white, white. I know they keep saying to uh, use dim lights, but we're going bright. Sand doesn't matter, bridging brake power doesn't matter. Cooling fans, I'm not sure what they do, but I presume it keeps, keeps training from overheating, so I'll keep them on. Uh, train heating on, uh, PZB, I still don't understand PZB, so we won't be using any safety systems, I do apologise. One day I will learn this stuff. Uh, cabin lights, shoes dim, pantographs all up and all that. Yeah, I'm happy with the train as it is. Let's get going. So, uh, traction force 70% out of the fine. Tap changer. Okay, maybe he doesn't want to go just yet. Uh, oh wait, makes me set the reverse star. That would probably help. Uh, I can explain PCB on Discord in just two minutes. Um, sure, I can throw it in there and I'll have to give it a read and we'll give it a go in today's uh, stream. Alright, most important thing how does the horn sound? Let's go for a better camera view. Don't think it's uh due no. 
Okay, so it's just a single horn where the button is. It's not too tiring like a lot of these trains, so uh, yeah, that'll do. Got the volume a little bit because the train sounds is seriously drowning out my voice right now. Otherwise, tap changer. Let's just bring that all the way. Emergency shutdown if required. Control lights, driver desk, and something. Uh, really hard to repaint function when the editor comes out. I mean, we've already got quite a few repaints, I must say, for the uh, Grey Western Mainline, especially. We've had a couple of liveries come out for that one. Your sprint start. There you go. Welcome to the uh, giveaway at Ragon05. Uh, so I do have control of the uh, tap changer with the A and C keys on the keyboard. That does make life a little bit easier, I will say. Turn the wheel, need a bit more speed in it. It's such a, a weird mechanism, because usually when it comes to a uh, wheel in the centre of the train, usually that means handbrake, not a uh, tap changer, but now that I know about it, it's certainly something to explore, because my favourite loco in Europe, I'd say, Continental Europe, out of this kind of era, would probably be the Polish um, EU07 or EP07, both the same trains, just different traction motor. But uh, this is the same generation, albeit it's built in Germany rather than Poland, but there are definitely similarities between the two, so uh, certainly a lot to enjoy with that. I mean, just look how low he's sitting compared to the windshields. You ain't seeing much out of that. And you've got your uh, generator on the side. I carry our loads across, so I'm going a little bit too fast now. So tap change will set up to zero. And at brakes, we'll put a little bit of braking just to slow the train down ever so slightly. It's 30 kilometres to our destination, so that's not much of an issue for us. And in terms of other trains on the same track as us down the line, it seems to be that we are alone for most of it, so yeah, no need to slow down or stop for anyone on the route. Yeah, that seems fairly sand right now. Looks good. I'm right, sure the brakes have released, but more power in. Power back out again. Desk lights off. Which uh, these may switches are desk lights. Uh, let's have a look. Ooh, uh, let me just slow the train down slightly. This one's coming in a little bit too fast at this point in time. There we go. We've got a pair of wipers. We've got horn. Ah, so this is where the horn is. Good to know. And C part just to my right. Uh, red bottoms. Ah, there we go. Right, turn that on. And it makes no difference. <laughs> now, I'll probably wait until we get to the uh, tunnels. Where I'm sure that'll play a bit more of a part of my setup. I do apologise if I'm not micromanaging chat and the train very well, because this really is a whole new way to drive. 
definitely needs to get you thinking. A bit more power in. Go. Uh, one over the one you pass at blue lights. Oh yeah, so we've got control lights, which is good for night time for like panel lighting in an aeroplane. Emergency shutdown. I can really kind of guess what that one does. Right. Uh, so a hard tap changer and bring a bit of braking in. Going downhill slightly, so I need to bear that into mind. Now release the brakes. And in the tunnel. Oh, okay, so it kind of just adds a bit of backlight to those ones on the right. That makes sense, that makes sense. Alright, slow down again. Release the brakes and put some more power into the train. I'm going to reset that quickly because the brakes were still active when I was turning that on. Hopefully, now it's released, it should be all right. There we go, power going back in again. And it really is a thinking train, this. I mean, if I get a picture up of the um, EU07 train, and that I was referring, referring to a moment ago, I mean, like I say, when it comes to this generation of all the trains, then it's this that it very much reminds me of, the EU07. This here is probably my favourite Continental train of this era. If I go for a picture of the cab... Presuming one of it exists. There we go. It's exactly the same as this. Bunch of buttons, same lever, same dials, and the uh, tap lever handle. Very similar layout. Uh, am I using CFA? Uh, not yet, no. I'm going to do this run first, and then I'll go through the uh, Discord. Right, a bit of breaking in just to slow us down. to our left, along with a siding train, not just a few carriages, are they? Yeah, just a few uh, wagons sitting on the sides. Release all the brakes, try to put some more power in. There we go. Little more traction force into it, just keep the train going. Uh, this is just the SD, so easy. Our right, next signal is green, so you proceed. get to 110 well then let's take it back onto idle now to enable it is control numpad enter sounds good right, so I'll do a quick run this first so I can get the uh, basically for the train and then we'll throw in DSD and CFA sorry DSC CFA which will basically be my first time using that Gosh, it really has a bit of speed to this, I must say. Probably we are going a little bit too fast over the limit, but uh, certainly not a slow train in this. Certainly not passing off as well either. Alright, 
release the brakes. There we go. About to set around 110. That should do 109, 108. Downhill as well, so we should slowly accelerate as well. So about 29 kilometers to go now, so we're about a uh, quarter of the way into this route now. I mean, this being rigorously ignored, it's been a little while since I actually last drove this map, but uh, yeah, I think it's what the longest one that we have in Train Some so far. This one is slightly longer than the uh, latest one, Main Space Art Barn. But for me, not quite as a uh, visual. Uh, what am I finishing today? Probably around 8 to 9 p.m. More likely 9, which is a little earlier than I usually do because I am going to fly tomorrow to France. So I do need to be um, up around 4 in the morning so I can actually get to the airport on time. So, uh, yeah, a slightly later one for me. See what else we can mess around. It's got windows we can open and close. That's the standard. Got a blind on the left here we can mess around with. That's pretty neat. What else have we got? Uh, yeah, another window on the side here. Well, it has a little bit there on the left, which kind of goes. Ah, so you can just open the side of hatch before opening the full window. That's actually really well detailed, Doctor. I love that. Blinds left again. We've got the auxiliary heating. I mean, I do have a bit of a colour, I apologise. We send the wiper control there. Let's go to the back of the battery. This is all what's uh, powering the train with the pentagraphs at the top there. And then the rear side is just the uh, rear carriages. Whoops. Oh, okay. No safe lock on the outside doors. You can't open that and leave if we wanted to. Uh, on the left, we've got the phone. We've got cab heating, that's we messed with. Got this display here. And this lets us control our. Uh... Oh, it doesn't really control anything, really. It's just a display. <laughs> We've also got. Oh, it's a bit loud in the tunnel. 15.5 kilometres. Got an uh, achievement for that one. The 155. Imagine seeing your engineer just walk into the rear of the loco. Absolutely. <laughs> Also got on us. Uh, so yeah, see that. I'm going to mess around with that at some point soon. Now it's pretty standard. Like I said, the only thing that really catches you out is the uh, the initial train controls and how to get yourself uh, starting up. Once you do figure out the basics, I guess, then it's not quite as uh, not quite as difficult as it seems. Now I really slow this down. Because we are certainly going a bit over the speed limit right now. 108 in a 70 zone. Uh, again, of course, I get uh, caught out by the very sticky um, mouse dragon there on the panels. I think that might bring us to a halt. Nope, we do just about get it without stopping. You have a weird bug on a Dosso control cab where you get the achievement in every single service you do. Which achievements? The, uh. Yeah, which achievements in reference to that one? Uh, how lots of games make it so you can go. You can open the outside doors in some games, but not in others. Uh, which one are you talking about, uh, Leo? I mean, I know that in Trainsome Worlds, they've got the uh, thing where you can like, go outside and explore the world. But if you're referring to Trainsome World and Train Simulator, then, um, yeah, it's basically just down to the fact that 
Train Simulator is the older game, which is slightly... I guess it's slightly less realistic, I'd say, in quotation marks. In reality, though, it's just more that it's an older engine, but still very much uh, up to scratch. Well, Train Sim World being a much newer engine running on Unity, the uh, sim, the way it kind of runs everything, is uh, a lot more modern in terms of its processors. Just the tap to lessen the acceleration there. Uh, most custom trains were 64 bit and trains in this based on a 32 bit engine. That too, that too. And I'm not quite sure what the engine is they use in train simulator, but train simulator being Unity just gives the uh, dev team a lot more to kind of do in terms of like interacting, opening up doors, kind of. Uh, Press E to climb down. I'm not even going to attempt that, I'm afraid. But I'm sure we can all enjoy the uh, the beautiful scenery go past as we stand as a train driver at the door. Because as we all know, train simulators and trains in worlds, it's all about simulating realism, isn't it? And if it's realism you want, then surely this is the best you can do. Uh, right, sit down. Actually, a bit more serious about that. So, speed down a bit. Bit of braking. On Great Ascent Express, I don't think you can open any doors on this. You can. Oh, right. Basically, it's down to the fact that uh, basically some trains, some modern trains, have electric locks on them. And as a result, it kind of uh, stops you from opening the model trains in mo motion. In this case, this is way before electric locks exist on the train. I mean, this is nothing more than the kind of boss and key you'd get yourself in a house. I mean, if I can try and speed that, I mean, there you go. Yeah, it's just a simple lock. It's a key into to open that. So it's basically the uh, same way you can open any train door. The local train there going on. Obviously doing a bit of a stock movement there. Because that is five 183s. Oh no, 1183 and a couple of 152s. I don't know. It's just a bunch of trains being moved around in the map. Um, yeah, you've had uh, turquoise of your backlighting, of course, of course. Going to be Russia. Oh, speaking of Russia, I got this properly, don't I? Um, where is it? One time it'd be perfectly suitable and it's disappeared. It'd be a bit more acceleration in just to be trained up. Guess not then. Um, yeah, for those who do watch my channel a lot, you 
would know about the uh, Soviet Union hat I've got. Unfortunately, that's just gone and disappeared. Oh well, maybe next time. <laughs> Uh, can you change destination boards by the good? So you could have any chance. I don't even know if it even has a destination board changer. Because neither of these displays seems to do anything. Uh, welcome, s gosh. Slorgy, Slorgy Boa, YT. How are you doing today? How are you doing? Nope, my Joseph Stalin hat has actually disappeared. What a shame. How annoying. Um, it's this freight liner, also packs. Um, the train used to do passengers initially, back when the Germany was still split down the middle, east and west. But uh, these days, they only do um, freight runs, they don't do passengers anymore. Although I don't know if Delta Games will do a couple of passenger services in the future. We'll have to see. But yes, it used to do passenger trains, but in the modern day, not anymore. No Soviet hat, but maybe my uh, train sim world hat will do us no uh, good. You have a 60 inch uh, US star flag, got it from the history teacher for your graduation, hanging proudly. Not bad, not bad. Shame I can't find it because along with the Soviet hats, I do also have a um, replica General's coats, Soviet Union as well. It's just hanging on my door to my right, so I would have uh, stuck that one as well, just for the sake of it, to complete the outfit. But uh, no, that's not going to happen today. Uh, you have a route suggestion. Uh, go for it. Go for it. I'm going a little fast now, so if I just uh, bring the power back slightly. Bye. Bye, which one? Uh, thank you. Ooh, thanks for donating, Niels. Much appreciated, man. Much appreciated. Thanks for making it even a little less boring. No worries, no worries. Screw it. I don't have the uh, hat for it.
But I will put on the uh, Soviet Union General's jacket. Folding properly. With a uh, high vis underneath it, of course, because that's how it works. Face cam slightly blocking the dials. Uh, which dials are you trying to look for? Uh, welcome, guys, to the stream. How are you doing today? How are you all doing? Welcome, new people. Right, so about 14 kilometers now from the end of the route. So, that we will start um, breaking for. Not for a little while, but uh, we have the majority of the map now. And he does get straight and does straight and out. Just before you do get to the freight yard, or you do divert off the main line to cross over to the uh, freight yard on the other side of the track. Uh, what's the best route in this game? Uh, me personally, the route I've probably driven the most is the uh, Great Western Main Line. My, I guess my local British um, train route, at least it's the closest one you've got for me in train time at the moment. Um, yeah, Great Western Rain Express I've driven a lot. I've also driven... Hmm, what's the other one I've driven a lot? Rapid Transit I've enjoyed. That. Watch out, some loud banging all of a sudden. Not too sure. Um, yeah, Northern Transparent's alright. West Sunset Railway was surprisingly good, I will say, as a British route. I mean, that was a heritage ride, but uh, that was a pretty good one. But um, other than that, yeah, I guess best US route is the. Um, Met the Metro One LIRR Long Lines Railroad. That was a fantastic service, I will say. Finally, third time lucky we got a good US train route. But um, yeah, best gem I'd say is probably this one, Routes Ignored. Steppy long map, one of the nicer looking ones. I say, visually, main spell start button is slightly more visually appealing, but as a route, this one just comes with a, a little bit more behind it. Uh, have I got the 350EP from Armstrong Powerhouse? Uh, do a live stream on that. That is the, um, hang on. Um, I don't have the 350EP, but I do have the, um, what's it called? The British mid, what is it called? It's the um, really good third party one. Uh, West Coast Mainline Trent Valley. I am also trying to pick up the pieces to get the full East Coast, sorry, West Coast Mainline from Euston to Birmingham as well. I think so I can try and get that one sorted out soon. Uh, you play come on Xbox, not bad, it's not bad. I mean, I've had a go at the console versions of the game. Well, I am still personally out more for the uh, console versions. Sorry, what, more for the PC version. Uh, the consoles are not actually that bad. I mean, Dutch games definitely put a lot of time into kind of uh, the dials at the edge of the speedometer. What do you mean, dials at the end? Of, what this you talking about? I mean, your face blocking the little speed dials around the edge of the speedometer. I mean, speedometer's over here. Is it? Yeah, that's the honest so I'm not sure. I mean, if I was doing that, then fair. Oh! Oh! I see what you mean now. Do you want me to move my head like that? Is that what you're looking for? Like that? <laughs> no worries, man. No worries, I do apologise. Um, can you more things in PC than game on the PC? Not really, no. The console version's pretty much exactly that, the PC. The only difference is that you just don't have one route, which is the um, original T6 Heavy Hall one. Uh, from the console version, you can't download the community made reskins, there are any. Uh, yes, modding will very much be impossible to do on the console versions as well, since the uh, mods will basically be um, PC built. Right, 
Right, so how can I move my head without getting in the way of the controls for you? If I were to do it like that, does that make it any better for you? It's a little more awkward for the setup, I guess, but uh, if that makes life easy for you guys to see the controls, at least the, the um, speeds and all that, then I am happy to uh, do that for you guys. Uh, can you set the destination boards on the consoles? Um, yes, you can do. So it turns out do have the working destination boards, which is the 183, the double stock wagon, and basically all the passenger services on the Rurus Ignored and Main Split Up Barn, as well as the 183 on the um, Rapid Transit. Then, um, yes, you can set the destination boards on those. A bit more throttling, or a bit more tapping even. And how far is it until you change tracks? Mm, not for a little while actually. Not until we get to the uh, main yards. There, so we've got a little bit. Uh, you have got the ruin route, sounds good. No Twitch, uh, should be on Twitch. So, uh, twitch.tv slash Troya. We are currently live on that as well. Um, and anyway, the console version is pretty much pointless. Because in there, you've got multiple amounts of routes to download. Console eventually running out of memory and lag. Very true. So, um, yes, these routes aren't exactly the smallest in the world. So, the more that you do try and run on that, it could cause a few minor issues as well. So, it looks good, but a bit more speed than actually, just kind of get the train back up to uh, more running, about lot more tapping actually because we do need to get the train up. Uh load of traction slightly as well just for the sake of trying to get up to speed. No power being in so if we just uh yeah reset the tap completely down to zero and then bring it back up again that should yeah reset power in nicely. Console version, yeah, pretty much that. Right, so six kilometers going now, just need six kilometers. Welcome to Street Manual, how are you doing today? Um, to be honest, with a better solution, does I get this idea of making rail simulator? Could you keep that version and have that to make the whole train similar to 64 bits? I don't think you understand at all the history of train simulation and train sim worlds. Um, I'm in the 40. Basically, could you. I'll be a bit more careful on the speed set. Um, could you is kind of like the predecessor for um, Death Row Games. So it used to be um, Electronic Arts train simulator before Could you picks that up and create their own translator, so at least two versions of it, before the company went by, 
uh, they went bust, and then um, a couple guys from RailSimulator.com, something like that. Basically, one of the guys who was really a fan of the projects then formed his own company, RailSimulator.com, which then took the Kuju Simulator and kept it going. So Railworks, Railworks then became Train Simulator. And then around time of releasing Fishing, they then renamed uh, RailSimulator.com to Dubtail Games. Which is why you will sometimes see the Rail Simulator name still in there because legally it's Rail Simulator.com Limited. Dovetail Games is just a trading name of Rail Simulator. So, um, yes. The whole backs thing is that Kuju is now bankrupt and Dovetail Games picked up the pieces of Kuju to continue on their simulator. Just a reminder, Ragon05. How the giveaway bot works is if you spam it too much, it will uh, automatically disqualify you from the uh, giveaway. So I wouldn't spam it too much, my friend. But uh, you are definitely a part of it. I can see your name it ticks on the uh, giveaway potential winners list. Anyways, um, come out to the points now. Well, we'll need to cut across to the left. So we'll start centering down and kind of let it roll onto that. We do accelerate again for the final part of the journey, which kind of just sees it car around the top, cross sides onto the left hand sides, where we then enter the freight yard and bring this train to an end. <clears throat> so that four kilometres, and it's just ahead of us, I believe the signals, yeah, signals are now red, uh, green and yellow, which kind of tells us that we are now pushing to a different line. Um, still would have been better to have Train Simulator to a totally separate game like Train Simulator is. I still don't know what you mean by that. I mean, that's kind of like saying when Microsoft released FSX, they should have kept it a totally different game from FS2004, despite the fact that they use the same code and back ends to all of that. I mean, at the end of the day, Train Simulator is more of a, like an an updated version of uh, Kuju. Because at the end of the day, Train Simulator, as it started out with Dovetail Games, that started out in 2012. Correct me if I'm wrong. Train Simulator 2012 was the first Dovetail version. Before then, Railworks started out in 2008-2009. Train Simulator Worlds, on the other hand, did not come out until officially came out of beta and early access last year. So, the main difference with that is Train Simulator and Train Simulator World, two separate entities. Train Simulator World acts like a spiritual successor, like a part two is Train Simulator. Although Train Simulator still has about seven years where it was just the single simulator of the games in its own right. So once again, like I say, it's like bringing in FSX FS 2004, where you're trying to say that they should have kept them two separate simulators, like the fact that on paper, they are both part of the same. I mean, if it weren't for Train Simulator, Train Simulator wouldn't exist in the first place. I mean, a lot of what Train Simulator did goes into Train Simulator World in terms of what the developers had learned, kind of like how the back end of the simulator works. all acceleration on that, but a bit breaking in, since we are slowly uh, accelerating here on the downhill bit. Uh, you can't see Train Simulator continue much longer, because we don't have Train Simulator World, so you need to put a lot of time into Train Simulator. Yes, because Train Simulator, as it stands, is still the uh, more complete of the simulators, still has thousands of routes, thousands of trains. Train Simulator will never die, and they will continue it forever, basically. I mean, the Dovetail Games themselves have said many times that they're going to put as much into Train Simulator as they do Train Sim World. So if you look at the player numbers and all that, TSW maybe gets a fifth of that of Train Simulator. And as a whole, probably isn't really that popular of a game due to the fact that there isn't much going on to it, with no modding and uh, not many locos. Train Simulator is still very much king and will always be in this case. Uh, I wonder if it's better ES series or Track series. Um, I'd probably say Zora Sprinter. 
Yoros is a series of trains. Stephanie are a more powerful bunch. I mean, great acceleration, great braking. You just can't go wrong with those trains, basically. Uh, Leo's trains. This is Leo trains. Our boats might be slowed down. She's trains in world, but trains in world. No! Our boats will not slow down at all. Every year, there'll always be a new train simulator. They'll update it every year until the end of time. The only reason Train Simulator gets any updates is because at the moment they are still very much working in the, the very beginning of it. And there are also a few more bugs in it as well that Dovetail Games do need to um, iron out. But as far as anyone's aware, Train Simulator will not slow down in any way, shape, or form. <clears throat> and that you can trust from me as a source because uh, I've done a couple of events with Dovetail Games. And speaking of which, I will be at Warley in November. If you guys are going to the um, Warley National Railway Show, National Railway Show modelling, something like that. But um, yes, in November, for two days, Saturday, Sunday, which I wish we can hear since it's the last one. But um, yeah, like I said, I will be with Dovetail Games and I will be helping them promote Train Simulator and Train Simulator at the um, show. So if looking to get in tickets for that, definitely uh, pop on and say hi. Break slightly, there we go. Alright, it's about two and a half kilometers now until we get to the uh, end of the line. And then, as I promised, um, where's he gone? As I promised, uh, Niels, I'll be uh, giving uh, Sifa a proper run. Let me get Discord open just so I can start reading his instruction while we are in the slower bit of the line. Let's have a look. Right, so, PZB is the awareness and braking monitor system. There are three buttons activate, by delete, ends, and page down. Uh, don't worry. Uh, PZB will come on very shortly. Next run it will be on. Uh, welcome, Kakus1981. How are you doing today? Yes, Mika, KPK, boo, PZB off. It will be on next time. Don't you worry. This is my literal first time running this train, so I'm mainly getting used to the uh, basics of this. Don't be too worried. When you see the sea flight illuminates, press the uh, orange warning on the hard press Q. That's fine. That's pretty much self-explanatory. Right, let's actually slow down now. Let's get ourselves ready to stop. So to activate it, it's shift, numpad, enter. Okay, that looks good. And then let's yeah, press Q once it lights illuminates. And then also three second board or warning. Right, let's give it a go, shall we? Let's do this, but you can call in stream, give you a better explanation. Yes, we have talked before. Uh, Alright, yeah, we're going to turn to heart and then we'll stick it into a uh, voice chat. Hang on. <clears throat> uh, do you have to stop? You have to stop doing HPZ. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Like I, said, I was just messing around to see if it all works. Uh, right, so we're going to turn to heart. And we'll start another service. We'll double check if it works on Rural C on the main space hub as well. Since I know that uh, it should work on both those routes, just not um, rapid transit. And yeah, see if it's quite easy to explain, because what C for sounds like is kind of similar to um What's it called? Uh, yeah, DSD, British equivalent. I mean, in the UK we have AWS and DSD. Sounds more like an AWS. DSD is where you just press the foot pedal down and not let go to acknowledge that you're still there. <clears throat> oh, 
there we go. Yeah, hit Q in every case. Right, do that. And we'll make a change starter at 11.05. We won't be doing that. We'll do a quick deboard, look around, and then go into a, another service. Edo's is so much easier than the PZB, though. The yeah, Edo's is less secure than PZB. There you go, not bad for your train. That's the 155. So that's a bit of a learning curve for the new throttle system. But, uh, yeah, so that's a new way to drive. Let's go back to the main menu and let's give it a go. Oh boy, I hope stream mode's not going to uh, try and kick me out of that. Why can't I hear you? Oh, hang on. Makes I've got it set to uh, sub mute. Hello? Hey, there we go. There we go, right. Okay, so uh, I think we got about a uh, 10 to 15 second delay with the stream. Yeah, it sounds about right for the most part. So, um, yeah, yeah, so it's released. I don't know if you've read my fucking paragraph in Train Sim. Uh, tab. Yeah, I gave it a quick look through basically on how it works <laughs> and the basics to it. I'll, I'll run you through it once again, don't worry. Sounds good. So you're gonna do it in the 182 or what? Uh, probably doing the 155 just for the sake of uh, keeping the stream together. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sure the 155 will be pretty much the same as all other PZB capable vehicles, so to say. Sounds good. So I'm not an expert, so uh, bear with me, but I, I, I know enough to. To not make you stop the whole uh, the whole time, it's just like <laughs> it's more than me. I've got uh, no clue on how well, it, is it works. <laughs> yeah, so so there are some bugs, for example, in the rapid transit route, uh, which will pretty much trigger PZB uh, when it shouldn't. I believe they completely redid all signaling for yeah, rapid transit recently. I, I think they forgot to uh, to edit the the variables for the one eight two because when I drive a one eight two and I enter like the underground part of uh, rapid transit. Yeah, I every time get a uh, piece head B emergency stop. Right, okay. Right, uh, so seeing TGV route from Marseille, Marseille to Avignon, which means it will be quite nice to see. We'll see if they so do a French route. The delay, just give me a head stop of when you're loaded. No worries, I am in right now. Although the delay, as you say, I'll just uh, take a few seconds to jump okay. in. Yeah, sure. Right, so, ba so basics, I presume, is just turn it on, which is shift enter. Yeah, yes, so shift enter. Yeah, so alright, see if it's on. And then control numpad enter should be PZ. PZB on. And I don't think this thing will have AFB since it's very. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's pretty much a speed. Yeah, camp. this train does not uh, have uh, AFB, I can tell you that for a fact. Yeah, well, <laughs> the, the. What's the thing called again? The Duster doesn't either, so. So pretty much, uh, as it's literally DSD, so I think the, the only difference is, is I think C will have random intervals to keep you on edge. Right. It's, it's not uh, at a set interval, and it will um, ask for a activation even if you touch the controls, because, you know, uh, DSD will only engage if you have not touched the controls for the past 40 to 60 seconds, I Okay. Uh, and CIFA will always uh, make And then PZB is um, the first thing you'll see, you'll see 70 at the top of your hood, right? At the speed on. Yes, why not 70? Yeah, so seven, 70 is the, uh, pretty much the the speed that it will cap you at under um, a monitor mode. So on freight trains, because they tend to go slower, it's uh, called 70 mode, and on... Um, uh, fast and uh, passenger trains, it will be 85. Okay. So, as you give it a little bit of power, once you get clear to go, because I see you get a red up, yes. uh, you will see it start to uh, flash. And you see that little thing next to the pole of the uh, the signal? You can zoom into it. Yes, I do. Uh, th that's a, a magnet, and uh, the magnet will pretty much trigger, it will let the, the PZB system know what situation you're in, so 
If you were to pass it right now, you would get an emergency stop, and it would be as bad. Yeah, basically. If it would be orange, uh, you would have to acknowledge it, or you would get an emergency break. So, uh, so basically, sounds like similar uh, to how uh, AWS here works in the UK, where it's just you pass a signal yeah, if it's, it's not green. It is, but it's more sophisticated. Um, yeah, of course, though. So. so, if you look on your keyboard, you have the three buttons next to each other: delete, end, and page down. Yes. And I think as you look to the left of the kind of steering wheel, and you press those three buttons, you should see the the, the physical buttons move. Yep, you've got uh, override, you've got release, and you've got uh, acknowledge. Yeah, so so override is pretty much for abnormal situations or when the signal changes between magnets. And then you have feasibly release, and you will see that after your first takeoff here in a bit, you will have to uh, the, the 70 will probably start to flash with 7085. And that will mean that you're in an initial uh, monitored mode, and you will have to leave that mode by pressing end for about a second, and that yep. will release you from the monitor mode. But you, you I don't know how this uh, scenario works with the uh, the signal when it will turn green. It should have been when the uh, passenger train passed, but obviously yeah, it's not. Probably not at the next block yet. Yeah. So pretty much um, all you have to do is uh, when you get a aspect that's not uh, clear so anything except green or when you get a orange speed restriction warning you will have to hold page down as you pass it uh, until like two seconds after and you will see uh, next to the 70 on the hood and, and you will also see it in your uh, as down display on the train uh, you'll see the uh, 500 hertz or 1000 hertz uh, light illuminate yeah and that will pretty much let you know that you're being monitored to slow down in time uh, to meet all the conditions. And and if you the difference with AWS and uh, PZB is uh, AWS will let you do anything what you want as long as you don't do this bad. But PZB will actually want you to follow a profile slowing down before the signal, and, and then it will have you acknowledge feed restrictions that are coming up because AWS will give you a ping if you get a new speed or you get go onto a siding, you know, um, but it won't actually monitor you and PZB will, so that's the main difference. Okay, sounds good. So, uh, you're looking at the, the Dosto now, right? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> here you can see one of the, the bugs, so in all the serv uh, services I drive, with the, the Dosto <laughs> I don't know why, but the tail lights are always off and I have to run to the back of the train and turn them on, it's really annoying. <laughs> yeah, not as bad as uh, the very start of the service where all the trains would just stop at a red signal and kind of just never drive again, causing massive gridlocks everywhere. But that yeah, just says... Yeah, installing the stream, I guess. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure why this one's not moving though. I hope it's not another one of these situations. Oh, your signal turned green. Oh, yep, okay, sounds good. Ah, another train just came in. I think we might so, wait for that one. Yeah. So, as you will start moving, pay attention to the 70, and it uh, should start flashing to another number. And you will have to press end before you pass, I think it's 45 kilometers an hour. I'm doing wrong. Uh, so that goes to zero. That bring up to 75. She Breaks the release. Sussly, <laughs> not a quick one. There we go. Did you release a parking brake? Why? Yeah, parking brake is <laughs> released. As you'll find out in 15 seconds. <laughs> I guess. There it goes. It's flashing. Yeah, so. You'll you press, you, uh, press the release. Yeah, yeah, there you go. It's, yeah, so you press end, and it should uh, release you from that mode. Right, okay. And uh, I don't know if this train yells Sifa at you or if it gives you a beep, but if you have a beep that you can't place, just press Q and you will acknowledge yeah. the Sifa. It, it will also, yeah, so there you go. It just did it, I think. Oh, you. Uh, yeah, see for reset. There you go. Uh, well, stretch and train. You shouldn't put the tracks there for selector low position first. 
So you won't really have to deal with PZB a lot, except for speed restrictions that are lower than your current line speed and an increase of speed uh, below 100, I believe. Okay. So furthermore, there's not a lot. Uh, there's not a lot more to it uh, that I can yeah. think of. How's a more audible? Let's see for that. Just a horn. Yeah, I just re muted as to not my, hear myself double. So. Ah, right, okay. Um, I think that's enough explanation um, uh, for now. So just remember that when you don't have a green signal, hold the acknowledge button until you've passed it about two seconds. And um, make sure you acknowledge any speed restrictions, and they're always indicated by a yellow sign to the side of the track. That's how you know that they're guarded by a PZB. So cool. I think we can do the rest via uh, uh, chat and uh, I'll give you a sterile cockpit to work with. <laughs> no worries, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're very much welcome. See ya. Bye. So that was uh, Niels with his uh, quick explanation on PZB and uh, CFART. No, she doesn't sound that bad as a system, really. It was uh, a little bit of a. Uh, Learning kind of due to more the fact that it's uh, a lot more advanced than the UK setup, but no, overall, that wasn't too bad, really. I mean, now I know the basics, it's really just a case of uh, now to into action. Alright, so 40 kilometers to Aschaffenburg, starting 106. We are not in front of a passenger train, actually. We actually have a clear track for the majority of the service. Reach this case of um, keeping on my speed restrictions, as well as uh, make sure that the C for is pressed every couple of moments. Just have the light come up first, two seconds, then the horn sounds, a few more seconds to that before we do uh, go on to match the brakes. When we get stopped, it's easy to disengage PZB, or I'll engage it when it gets you know, like two kilometers. Sounds good. So be careful, coming up to 70 now on speed limits. There goes another train now on the left. This is the uh, first AI 155 actually seen so far in the stream. Now I'm carrying uh, cars heading towards um, where we came out of. Uh, besides speed restriction, you also need to confirm PCB and passing a repeat signal announcing yellow or red aspect. Yellow missiles may be at the same time repeat as next reds. Signals out in yellow, also usually means speed restriction coming up as well. So, not particularly long train today, right now. Not very much carrying a um, couple of freight loads. Almost likely destined for different destinations along the route. Now, who's the person speaking to you? That was um, Niels. I think he's a mutual friend of me and my brother. And um, yeah, he just gave me a quick explanation about how PZB works. As well as see if I just kind of get the basics on German trains. Like I said, I'm not the most confident with German trains. But um, obviously, he's got a bit more experience behind that. There you go. So, 38 kilometers to the next station. These are our stopping points. And also being in the main spec-up barn. So, to get the, uh, the more visually appealing routes to uh, enjoy as we drive. Like I say, the main spec-up barn, the actual map itself looks beautiful for where it is. Uh, about repeat signals, don't believe they have signals. Usually, visually try to identify as they have a magnet to acknowledge. Okay. Know how repeat signal works. It's kind of just uh, well, it's in the name. Repeats the aspect of the uh, next upcoming signals. It kind of gives you a warning of um, what's to come. Uh, first one does. There are further repeaters indicated by white lights. 
uh, while I may also mean a smaller distance next to mine, so don't trust the white light signal not to have magnets. Cool. See for definitely uh, lots a few more times than uh, most UK systems, but uh, still a very, very simple system to kind of understand really. Just keep that going. I mean, I won't get much of a chance to uh, use PZB in the service and unless uh, points also get affected by it. Seems like we've got a clear track for the whole journey really. Uh, can you hear it lands from outside the train? Uh, yes, you can, and while not realistic, I think it's more for the fact that it keeps you alert, keeps you aware whenever you are um, going up to the next signal. Uh, West German HP signal is a bit more confusing. So one question I do have is, when it says um, PZB speed limit 70, does that mean I have to be below 70 by the next signal? Or what does it kind of um, keep in track with the 70 there? Because as you say, freight trains being a bit slower go to 70 while passenger cars up to 85. Is that like an ultimate speed limit or is that uh, something I just need to um, keep an eye out for? Uh, they do because otherwise exterior shot guys get annoyed. Yes, like I said, so it's more just for the um, facts that those on the outside cams can be a bit more alerted. Do uh, whatever they're doing in that. That was more of an answer to who asked that question. Answer to Leo's train's question. Uh, on rapid transit bit of field approach, you can see the signal which has three repeaters. Do them the white lights, but no magnet, as the first one needs to be confirmed, right. So if we stick the camera, let's find a nice gap in the bushes, there we go. <laughs> Alright, what PCB mode you use depends on your braking capability you're trying. This determines the maximum uh, speed and influences the uh, speed we get confirmed as magnets. Right, okay, so the influence speed is number you see, maximum operating speeds are as follows. So I need to uh, keep note down. It's like going to school again, but in this case driving a train. Because as you guys know, it's time to learn a train. This is right on the job, I'm doing the contracts, right? So Moji 55 is max 100 kilometers an hour. You have to break at 105. Uh, mode M, which is 70, max 120, breaks at 125. <clears throat> uh, mode O, which is 85, max 160, breaks at 165. Right, so because I'm on mode M70, I presume, that's why it says 70 there, my maximum speed will be 120, breaks 125. Okay, so that means I can go a little bit faster than this, good to know. It's at 125, the brake starts going down at... So 
I get to around maybe 110 with my current speeds, because given this train, give or take 10 miles per hour, gives me a chance to kind of uh, probably take control of that. Well, the kilometers to the next signal, there we go. And then it'll be a green, which now has to go straight into our next um, block. Bring that back down now. About 10, I'd say, be alright for the tap. Uh, can you tell me the alarms off the settings that you could do in the Great Western Express? Uh, you can do. It's just a case of um, setting up the uh, AWS and DSD and switching those off. So in this case, again, it's just Control Enter. Sorry, Shift Enter and um, Control. Whatever it was. Uh, basically, yes. Yeah, so yeah, control enter and shift enter the alarms. I can turn them off through that. Though, so ever since the um, Ladbrook Grove crash in the UK, where uh, HST slammed into, I think it was the side of a freight train, the um, 166 into a HST, sorry, 165 into HST was different um, accidents entirely. But after that Brook Grove crash, um, yeah, it meant that all safety systems must be required in UK trains because before it was a bit more relaxed and drivers could have them switched off, they weren't really wanted to. But um, no, because of that Brook Grove, it is now always required on. Yeah, shift enter and control enter, and using the numpad enter, turn those on and off. Delete and page down to. Watch the um, P Z B and then Q for the uh, C far. So yeah, it's not too difficult really to understand. Like I say, it's just uh, learn the basics basically. But no, now I've got a bit of instruction. No, it really is actually a very simple system. This. Alright, I'll slow down now. Go. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really fun train this actually, I will say the 155. Now that I now know all the basics of how it works, how to operate and all that, I know that my speed management of it's a lot stronger than it was, say, when I started off the um, stream. It really is a fun train to drive for this. Very, uh, a lot of thinking that goes behind it, but once you know the basics, then um, yeah, it's pretty good again. Thank you again, Niels, for the uh, tips on that. And very much worth the uh, 10 quid it goes for on Steam. And likewise again, just a reminder, we still have the giveaway to do the end of the stream for the uh, 183. So if you're interested in joining that, just say uh, your response from the chat for a chance to enter that. So this will probably be the last roof six. Like I said, I do need to uh, get up very early tomorrow for my flight to um, Biarritz from Sandstead. So uh, yeah, I'll have to uh, leave for that. Although I will need to do one or two more of these services. But for now, I do need to uh, put my sleep into a more priority area. My right, skin has gone up now, so I did use brakes. So I do need to uh, go down to zero. Get power in. Let's get some speed up. Uh, you always remember that you could change it so you have the alarms on the inside of the train and the outside ones to be switched off. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think so. I'll go through the audio settings for you. No, I don't see anything for... Oh, okay. No, you're right. External alerts. You can do. There is a switch right there to um, change your volumes. Why anyone wants to do that though is a whole separate question. But uh, yeah, it does actually exist. No worries, Leo. You're actually right. We're all wrong. Um, anyways, let's carry on. That mouse 15 again.
mission coming up. Speeding through that. I mean, like I say, it takes a, a little bit of getting going on the 155 to accelerate from the get-go. But the moment you've got to speed up, then uh, straight away goes up. Uh, you don't understand. Don't understand what, Ragon05? How can we help you? Keeping on the uh, little sea flight there, spotting that before the alarm does make life uh, a lot easier, especially. Keeps you uh, a little bit more aware than just listening to a sound file. But um, yeah, it's just kind of easy to look at right by the speedometer as well. I'm just kind of manage to try it because normally with most other trains and other sort of systems, it just starts shouting at you, blaring alarms. But uh, in this case, it's, uh, it's a lot more relaxed, a lot easier to keep going. For example, I missed it there. This is more of a simple horn rather than, again, just AWS lands blaring at you. Telling you to uh, slow down. Or sometimes shouting C flat, which I believe is what the um, 182 does. Again, don't quote me on that, but um, yeah. It's not a bad little system, that. Right, so 25 kilometers to go now. While I'm here, I'll make sure that we've actually got everything turned on as it should be, which uh, isn't. <laughs> right, volume fan on, uh, sand, that doesn't matter, doesn't matter, headlights are bright, and bring on the uh, one important glow in the dark cab lights. There, that makes more sense. Now we're legal. Little fast, so we're gonna power down to zero again. Bit braking, just slow us down. Um, one or two scream C fart, Dosto beeps. Right, okay. Waiting for the first emergency brake from VZB. <laughs> yeah, that's all. We, that's what you're all waiting for. That's what you're waiting for. Now I'm keeping close on my speed there. I don't quite want to make it all the way to 120. I think 110 is fine. But it's the signal changes that I need to uh, be a lot more worried about. Especially going over points and changing tracks. That will definitely be the uh, end of me for sure. Just wait for a yellow signal. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. No trains in front of me. I think. Uh, so it's best to have these quiet alarms rather than having passengers shout "Seafar" at you in your ears. Seafar, not Seafar. Seafar, S-I-F-A. Um, RSN Dosto, Seafar don't work anymore. <clears throat> If you tap A twice, the two can also beep. 20 kilometers for the e-brake. Uh, 
Is it? No, it's slightly different. Hang on. So that was um, PZB. So that's CIFA. And PZB is slightly higher pitch. Yeah, not quite sure what seafair means. I'm not sure what the uh, the ocean has to do with um, trains, but hey. Anyways, we quickly bring the uh, tap down to zero again, just so I can sell it right. There we go, for some power back in. I'm going to say, by the end of this live stream, I'll probably be so used to uh, turning a wheel to have the train accelerate, I'm going to completely forget what a throttle is. Next time I'm on flight simulators are, I have no idea what any of this stuff does because it's a whole new system to me. Who knew turning a steering wheel would be so natural on a train? Next time I go drive, just driving along, driving along, oh, slowing down. <laughs> Oh boy. CIFA is Shire Heights Shire Heights Half Shelton. Shire Heights so Shire Oh boy, hang on. Oh no, 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 no. That's the high pitch. Oh, that was always going to happen. Yep, that's the emergency break. <laughs> right, let's bring this train to a halt and let's uh, get going again. What, did I miss a signal or uh, what was I going over? Wasn't that to uh, die on me? There we go, right, so, acknowledge that. Right. Going again. Uh, sorry if you tracked me with German word. Don't you worry, don't you worry. I thought Finnish words were hard to pronounce. At least with Finnish words, the um, characters are all the same. Right, uh, train tap change to zero. Give it a few seconds. Let's run forwards. Power in. No, okay. Uh, picture down, page down, you mean. Knowledge. Thank you for following on Twitch, Scotty. Much appreciated, much appreciated. There we go, power in now. Let's try that again, shall we? Second time lucky. Uh, using the mode where you speak, the iPad records my voice, so instead of having to type it down, you might have some spelling mistakes. Right, okay. Might be going. Ah, right, I need to recharge the brakes. Maybe that would be the uh, key for that one. So, released, released. Now, there we go. Just have to uh, recharge the brakes. Ah, never mind. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're streaming on Twitch and YouTube. So if you're on Twitch, it's twitch.tv slash drawyart. Follow me on that as well. I uh, didn't know you can throw yourself out of restricted after a magic break. There you go, much appreciated. Much appreciated manual, Franz Max. Didn't know you could throw yourself out of restricted after the match you break. Uh, what part of England am I from? Uh, London. London, England. Please put a little less traction power in the snow. A little less in. Uh, Twitch thing's broken here. Oh, is that my uh, old link? Let me double check chat. Yeah, that might be my uh, old link. Ignore that. It's twitch.tv slash Droya. If it says Droya Games, drop the games. 
There you go. Thank you, uh, G Kirk, Scotland One, for following. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Maybe fill the cup at some points. That's never happened. <laughs> uh, what part of London? Uh, Greater London. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, Twitch, much better than YouTube live streams. I know it's exactly thing, exact thing you hoped wouldn't happen. Nope, I've done it again. We come to a halt. Uh, didn't acknowledge the 19th come to an hour magnet. Right, okay. Right, so acknowledge that. Right, why is it beeping at me now? It takes a vision vision driver again, yes. Alright, sorry, I don't need to get going for that, was it? Uh, let's do that again, shall we? So, reset the brakes. Bring this down to zero. There you go. So, at 70. We'll reset the uh, tap changer. All oh, looks good. Everything's clear. Cephas off. We see if it's acknowledged. Let's get some power in. A little bit more traction in just for the sake of uh, going. Right, let's give it a go now, shall we? Uh, how's my day doing? Uh, not bad, not bad. Like I say, just getting ready for my. There we go, did it this time, did it this time. Um, yeah, just like I said, doing this uh, live stream today, it's been a good day at work. Live stream today, the new 155, for going to bed early, ready for my trip to Biarritz tomorrow, flying to France. Should be quite fun. Uh, well done for using PZB, it takes a while to understand it. It takes a while, and I've already messed it up twice, in about five minutes, so, um... Yeah, fingers crossed, it won't be a third time the charm. Although, all bad things do come in threes. We've got 18 kilometers to go, about halfway down the map, or just over it. So let's stress now here. Things should be a little bit easier, a bit more relaxed to kind of enjoy. I'll re also real stream as well, figure out where the 90 kilometer magnet was, and kind of just uh, work my way around that. Is there a visual like, um, or even audible? Easily the um, thing I should acknowledge first, or is it just a case of uh, keeping out for the magnets to acknowledge that? Unfortunately, we are a freight train, not passenger, so slow down for anyone else it should not be a issue for us at all. Uh, no advance warning. Good. <laughs> Good to know that my uh, lack of route knowledge will be the one slowing me down today. Acknowledge it as you pass over. Oh, great. At some point, I will try and find a map of all the PCB points on these um, parts of the route. I'm sure that one of those exists somewhere. Yeah, I'll double check that um, bot link for Twitch. Like I say, it's just most likely the fact that it's not been updated since I changed the username over on Twitch from Droya Games to just Droya. Alright, so we're going at a steady 70 now, 69.70. And once we've uh, left this part of the valley, we can straight now, so we look up again. Problem is, they're only active when signals aren't green, so at that point, help. Oh, okay, even better. We just case the people on the uh, indicator so right above me on the top right, as well as my own uh, eyes and magnets on the side of the tracks. <clears throat> right, so there you go. See what's coming up. This one does not. Oh, yeah, this one has magnets. 
Mas tu não dá tu anything, tá aí? That's on a green signal. <laughs> Better be safe than sorry. Ha ha, first one, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, one more, exclamation mark. Uh, there's already a few people that sense to give away. I mean, it's been a. Coming up to a two hour stream now, so we'll probably end at two hours. Woo. Don't go one, two, five, because of course. Breaks. Yep. I'm waiting for that. Went too fast. Currently in mode 70. Means that I can only go 120 max. 125 is when the brakes start off. Gave me a few seconds to slow down, but obviously forgetting where the brakes were. Oh! Has it released it? There you are. No, release the brakes. If that's released the brakes, then it makes my life easier, so it means I don't have to slow down again and stop. Yeah, I think it has done. Okay, thank you, Gem Drains. I'm not sure if that's like not meant to happen, but uh hey, happened for me, at least. Anyway, it's 13 clumps to the go. Well, that's as the crow flies, because uh yeah, the more we twist and turn, the less that kind of changes. Didn't know that was possible. <laughs> yeah, I was expecting the moment the uh, magic break came on, you have to go down to zero. Obviously, maybe I did something, I like acknowledged it or ran over it a bit. I'm not too sure. But uh, something happened. Let me let it all go and. <clears throat> no, right. If you're at all the trains, what do you do you get them all? Uh, no, because the only one I'm releasing today is the 185 Euro Sprinter. I've got two other keys to give away at some point, but uh, those will be doing on different streams. I've got one for West Somerset. I've also got another route for. Um, What's it called? Uh, Northern Trans Pennine. So I've got both the uh, UK routes as well to give away at some point in the future, but not today. Only ones are the. Uh... What does G mean? Okay, I've released it again. I have a feeling you're going to pass signal danger a lot. <laughs> Don't you worry, this is only to start. Uh, G means overspeed, right, okay. That's good to know. Uh, down you'll find all the good German names for Wagon's Law. Go more than 120. Yeah, 120 is the uh, maximum for mode 70 or mode. Where has it gone? The explanations of them all. I go mode M, which is 70, which is max 20. Breaks on at 125. It's about 8.5 kilometers to go now into our destination, which is fairly straightforward now, so I think two majors to go around. Uh, 125, that means slow. Don't worry, I've not done any spads yet. I've just uh, 
been very bad at speeding, keeping the train at speed management. In terms of keyboards, in case you want to keep it on our A and D, Q, for that, page down for the acknowledge, and then uh, semicolon and explain and uh, quotey mark, whatever it's called, for the um, brakes. Colon, that's it, colon. Uh, isn't the max of that on 6 100 kilometers an hour? Uh, don't think so. I'm not quite sure what the velocity of this train is or the um, consist, but uh, man, these brakes are not very effective. <laughs> maybe the brakes aren't effective, or the drive's not effective. I think that may be the uh, true answer for that one. The driver is very ineffective. He's in mode M, not mode U. Yeah, always blame the train. Driver's perfectly fine. He's exactly the uh, most qualified person for this uh, job. Yeah, wagons. We're in freight, so it's uh, one, two, five. We're in mode M. I mean, I don't know the difference either, so don't ask me. But uh, I'm just going by uh, what a German guy told me in the chat. I think I just stick to my uh, one ten rule. Just for the sake of uh, not going too far or too fast. Uh, I thought I was be at zero to use brakes. Right, okay. So hang on. if I was to use the brakes now, you'll see me this this would do nothing. Fair enough, okay. Brakes need to be at zero. So you're Dutch, it's you and um, somebody else as well. Who was giving me the actual uh, speeds as well. Where's he gone? Uh, Mika KPK acknowledge bums. <laughs> Gonna relax in your bed and chuck some my pajamas across the room. It's good to know. Yeah, we're stopping. We're stopping. Welcome, Mads, to the stream. How are you doing? Uh, well, I put that to zero. I acknowledge the um, C for at the very least. Oh, look, it's uh, not quite a green signal right the points coming up to. At least hold the acknowledge for that. And stop, right? Reset the brakes. Brakes are recharging. Yeah, don't you worry. At this point, the uh, anti spam will most likely have um, blocked him from winning this giveaway. Because at the end of the day, the setup is well, it's always a chance for everyone to win it. The more you spam it, the less chance of winning you get. Uh, why did sound just change? Uh, well, I guess because he stopped. Right, we reset this train again, so down to zero. PCB release. That's all fine. Uh, traction force down to 75 should be enough. And power up, hopefully. Please. Valve is open, brakes are on. Valve's closed, recharge the brakes. Uh, oh, maybe my driver brake also will need to be um, set to release in order for the train to move. Maybe that would help me. Uh, 
power's not going in. Have I gone and broken it? Is that uh, what I've done here? Where's the um, circuit breaker? I saw open circuit breaker. Set that to neutral. Circuit breaker closed. Power's in. Train forwards. Tap changer is doing nothing. Uh, what have I done? Let me just turn off PCB maybe. No, it's not a PCB issue. What have I done? What have I done to break the train? Normally I can break a train within five minutes of starting it. This is the first time I've actually done it right at the end of a stream. Where things were looking great. But the last second, uh, disengage PCB for a second. Right, so we'll do that again. Uh, PCB, I'm going to turn off AFB, sorry, C4 as well. It's certainly a power thing with traction here. Circuit breaker open. Let's load a pantograph. Let's uh, do it again. Breaking trains to the skill too. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Is better Vectron or Trax? Probably the Vectron, I'd say. Nope. Is this thing completely and utterly dead now? Uh, welcome Shock Kiev, how are you doing today? How are you doing? Welcome to the channel, welcome to the chat. Oh, we're moving! Okay. Well no, we're actually more rolling because there's no power in train right now. Okay, can we roll downhill for the next two kilometers where the end of the route is? I don't know. Because I'm looking at this, we're accelerating, but there is no power coming into the train. Reset MCB. Okay, we'll do that again. So open the circuit breaker. Bring back the uh, tap changer down to zero. I'll go to the back of the I'll just reset the whole power completely. Uh, he repaired it after he broke it. Um, well, it's not repaired it. I'm just rolling it at this point. Uh, right, PZB. That's fine. Battery isolation. <clears throat> On. Um, let's do compressors that matter. CIFA that off just for the sake of the fact that I'm actually in the drive cab right now. Alright, okay, this is um, PZB mode, so I said over here. Uh, that's why I can see you set over here. I honestly don't have a clue. We're doing something, but uh, certainly isn't me doing it. Bad engineer police is here. Open up. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Train roll off to the distance. Yeah, just two kilometers. Two kilometers at 15 miles per hour. Two kilometers an hour. Because uh, that seems to be the only way we're doing this at the moment. Uh, hey, Drury, how are you and what do you think of this train? It's not bad. It's not bad. It's uh, a lot of fun, this, the 155. Um, yeah, a lot of fun, this train, but uh, very much getting uh, used to driving it. It takes a bit of learning. Lupin Greybeard, how you doing, my man? How you doing? Hope you're feeling well. Welcome to the channel, welcome to the chat. Hope you're doing well. 
God bless the gradients. Absolutely. If it weren't for a downhill stretch of track, we would not be going anywhere at the moment. <laughs> um, yeah, Roy saves energy. You see, German people, I'm actually uh, helping you guys here. Save a bit of power just by rolling the train down the track. Who needs uh, electricity currents? In fact, let's just ensure there's no power going to the train by cutting all power entirely. It's just us, gravity, and the brakes. The next kilometer and a half until we come to a halt. Because <laughs> I'll be damned if I'm not bringing this train to the end of the service. And we're going to do it, regardless of how long it takes and how we're going to do it. <laughs> German engineering doesn't even need power. No, absolutely not. In fact, it's not even German engineering. This is pure Soviet power and brawl, this. This train was built in the Soviet Union. So no, screw the Germans and their power. This is proper Russian power. Running on vodka. <laughs> Power to zero, brakes to zero, then reintroduce power. Okay, let's give it a go, so... Tap change up. Zero. And, uh, reverse to the neutral. Brakes are uh, running, release, release. Okay, brakes off. <laughs> running on steam power. So German trains are fake electric. Absolutely. In Mother Russia, hill drives you. Right, so let's get this to go. Pantograph raise. Because the hill's slowing down now, we are slowing ourselves. Circuit breaker closed. We should now have power in the train, well, there's no way to kind of tell that really. Uh, there's none of these panels behind us we can work around. What's actually through this door? Actually, under exit really. Uh, and the back kit. Battery isolation's on. Seats and da -da -da -da. nope. This train is completely and utterly dead. Reverse the set, reverse and forwards. Yeah, it's in reverse. That goes to the forwards. And you had one job. We had one job. Gravity could only get us so far. But sadly, not enough. Yeah, nice your brakes will stay closed. Sorry for introducing the PZD. No worries, man. No worries. You had to learn somewhere. Obviously, this was my uh, first crash course into the system that probably just blew out one of my brakes or something. That's mostly like what's happened. Something has uh, blown out. And as a result, it cuts all power to my train. Yeah, I'll definitely spend a bit more time working with PZB. Just learning the uh, basics and whatnot. It's nice, though. Give it one more go. In fact, let's give it one more proper go. So set that to neutral, taps to zero, brakes off. We even turned the power. The brake key. Uh, circuit breaker open. Close the pantograph. Transformer is off. Battery isolation off. That should be everything. PCB's off. Auxiliary compressor's automatic. MCB. Pentagraph. Alright, so we'll go from the beginning. Battery isolation. On. There's two modes of isolation, I think. That's I and... Okay, they're both I, three matter. Back in the front. Next thing, pantograph raise. 
uh, when were these trains made? These are 1980s in East Germany slash Russia Soviet Union. Circuit breaker. Yeah, open. Sorry, transformer all on. Circuit breaker close. Uh, 70s. Reverser forwards. Brakes. Sorry, turn the key. Brakes forwards. Released. And tap changer. No. This is dead. There's nothing I can do about that, I'm afraid. Unless we... That's a zero. Oh, we're rolling again. We are rolling again. Come on, train. It's a kilometre. 1,300 metres. Surely you can roll it at 2.5 kilometres an hour for the next kilometre and a half. Sheer willpower is all that's running this train. Sheer willpower. I'm sure we can give it some extra motivation, shall we? This is what powers the train. Fumes. Fumes and comrades. The little PZB loco that couldn't. <laughs> We're gonna do it guys. We're gonna do it. Even if it kills us. We will slowly but surely make it into Alf Schaffenberg. This is what East Germany wanted. It's all it ever wanted, and never could. And I'm sure, by the next 20 minutes, we can finish this kilometre, and get to an area that we can stop at, just to bring this train to an end. Because this is what the 155 is all about. This is all Dovetail Games wanted from us in driving this new train. Not the electrics, not this new fancy steering wheel, none of the uh, maps and missions. It's the sheer willpower of getting this train going. No matter how long it takes, we're gonna bloody do this thing. You see that freight train there, the 183 coming towards us, 182? Who cares about it? You're modern, you're rubbish, you need electric, you're junk. This train is running on nothing but gravity. This is the future of trains. Who needs steam? Who needs diesel? Who needs electricity? You need none of that. You just need sheer willpower. Sheer willpower and Soviet engineering. We've reached 10 kilometers an hour. We're still going. Nothing, and I can assure you, nothing will stop us. We've got one kilometer to go. One kilometer. I really wish I had my Soviet Union hats right now, because that would be the perfect image when we force our way around. The station should come to view any second now. We're within a kilometre. We are so close to the destination, we can almost touch it. If you have Xbox, you won't win the giveaway. The giveaway is a uh, PC only, I'm afraid I probably should have made that a bit clearer in terms of conditions. Anyways, the station's come around the corner, we can see it. In any second now, we should be within range of the stop point for our train.
We're so close. So close now. Basically, put one percent trading, which stops you just for destination and lets you roll back. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. The situation is best described by German words. Tja. Yeah, the Finns have it best with Sisu. Uh, can you do a cold and dark with this train? Um, the train is all. Yeah, okay. Can I do a cold and dark with the train? You've got it right here. This is cold and dark operation. There is nothing around this train. The power is connected, and the whole train has gone kaput. But this train is running on gravity and sheer willpower alone. We're actually making it to almost 20 kilometers an hour at this point, and less than 500 meters to go until we stop. This could be the most glorious moment of the Soviet Union. Just a shame it collapsed nearly 30 years ago. Come on, train, you can do it. It's so close. So close. Stop points right up ahead. We're ready to go on the brakes. The moment we hit that red marker, we're on the brakes. Because just like that, we've managed to roll a completely broken train, generating no electricity, a kilometre and a half, right down to the end of its scheduled routes. Because this delivery of cars, oil, and God knows what else we're carrying, will make it regardless of this train situation. We ain't spadding this, my friend. We ain't spadding this. We're crawling right to the very end. Because this, my friend, is how you drive a train. You see it here first, guys. Droyer is the greatest train driver of all time. Final score, you better give me a bonus for this, Dovetail. We gained absolutely nothing. We gained 86 points. 86 points for that. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful this, it really is. Um don't try for the red team or lol. Absolutely not, absolutely not. So uh yeah, right. Time for the giveaway now, I guess, because like I said, we're gonna end the stream here. But um yeah, so the giveaway for the 183 Euro Sprinter. Reinvented trains since 2019. Absolutely. Who needs the power? Who needs steam? Who needs diesel? When you've got gravity, baby. Gravity is all you need. Right, so, we've got, like I said, we've got one, eight, um, two keys to give away today. The Aura Sprinter. So, without a doubt, <laughs> that's 18 more than you deserve. <laughs> no. I'm taking that 86. I'm framing it on the wall. It's actually 2200. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. So, let's give it a roll. Who's going to win? Who's going to lose? Let's give you last 10 seconds to join. Type your Sprint in chat for a chance to win. And the winner gets revealed in 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. PDX Mark 77, well played man. You've won yourself a copy of the Dovetail Games Train Some Worlds, class 183. Hopefully I've got a way to contact you. If not, I'll try and find you. It's going to be a bit of a search, but uh, hopefully Chan's got my messaging option or something. We're on Discords. But yeah, I'll try and figure out where you are, and I'll give you a copy of the um, 182. But uh, yeah, there you have it. This is how you drive the 155. Object complete. Oh, we completed another mission. <laughs> two in one, two in one. Gerenbuden to Afschaffenberg. That was a 10 second mission, that. Man, that was a tiring one. See, you do get your bonus mission in the end, guys. Anyways, um, yeah, I think now's a good time to bring this one to an end. The 155. It's a very fun train, this. Takes a bit of learning, but uh, once you get.
Right. <laughs> Thank you for doing that then. Um. Anyways, yeah. So that was the uh, DVBL 155 or the 250 back in its um, Russian Eastern Germany certification. It's a very fun train. This it's a lot of fun, a bit of a learning curve, but once you get going, nah, it's definitely a, a joy to run from start to finish. I think now is a. Uh, <laughs> I think now's a perfect time to end it there, really, before this train goes off and does a runner again. Can't close the door unless I just do uh, that. Nope. Come on. There's no driver in here, so I'm not sure how it drove away again. Obviously, the uh, sheer power of Russian technology needs no driver. In Soviet in Soviet Russia, the train drives you, of course. That's it. I've just solved trains again. Reinvented the train since 2019. Anyways, I think now I'm just going to end it here before I start going uh, crazy in the mind. So, um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the live stream. Do leave a like if you do subscribe. It's been fantastic talking to you guys. And I do wish you a fantastic weekend. Um, tomorrow, we're doing a premiere in the morning for my uh, flights to be out it, so do tune in for that if you're interested. Likewise, do also check out my um, second channel, Europe Overloaded. Basically, um, this is uh, my new channel, and it mainly focuses on vlogs in the real world. In my case, going all to these places in Europe, and then food deals on that, so uh, you can tune into that. Uh, not sure if this is the way that I've envisioned how you'd promote the loco. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm sure when uh, Martin logs into uh, his account tomorrow, and look, yeah, so as sure as he goes into work tomorrow, logs in and checks out how this goes. I'm sure the last uh, couple of minutes of the Soviet anthem while we all shout into the ca I've just been killed by a truck. What is going on? <laughs> I've just been kidnapped by a train. It's a 182, isn't it? 183, 182. 185, I don't know anymore. I've just been kidnapped by a train. I am now stuck in the car compartments of the uh, train. This has to be the weirdest stream I have ever done on this channel. Nothing compares. Absolutely nothing compares. <laughs> this is mine now. <sighs> I'm going to go mad. I really am. My mind is just uh, collapsing every couple seconds. It's a very long train, this as well. Very long. Oh, is this train moving as well? I can't teleport back into it, so it's not my train anymore. Um. Right, <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. You have a great evening. I'm just gonna sit here and go mad in my own shell. Uh, you're all great. You're all great. I love you all. <laughs>